There we go. All right, give me one second to get the feeds all working, and then I will be on. Maybe. There it is. There's Facebook. And give me one minute and we'll get going. I just want to make sure I got both feeds up so I can see comments. Good morning, everybody. Ah, there is YouTube. Excellent. Oh, YouTube put something over my head. That's okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Samantha Mirabal with Milka's application team, and we're back to, to our design shop talk. Sorry about last week. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to type them in on the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube. I'm going to try to review both of them as we go. Um, I did have a few questions that were sent in ahead of time. We'll start with those, and then we'll kind of bounce on to any others that come up during the live. Okay, so let's see what we've got first one was how do I make envelope text is there a video already um, give a link to where how to find it good morning Lorena um, yes I did post the link where you asked this question however I was gonna go ahead and show you guys how to find these videos um, just one of the many ways to find these videos because I figured that might be useful so if you go to the Melco service site, let's start there. So I'm gonna bring that over here. So if you come to the Melco service site and down here we have design shop. So if you click on that, here's the manual. I'm gonna click on the manual. So from here, you can look for whatever it is in the table of contents that you're trying to learn about and click on it and it'll take you to the section. So let's see, we want to look at line type, lettering, so it's a type of lettering down here. Uh, I guess I should have found, oh, line types right there. So I'm going to click on line types. Notice right here, there's a little icon for um, video. If you click on that, it'll take you directly to the YouTube video. All right. The other thing you'll notice is while you're here, there's some write up on each of the segments. So you can review it here to see, you know, the description of how it works um, and things like that. And then you can come watch the video as well. All right. I'll go ahead and show you how the um, envelope works just so we can do that. So what you would do is you create whatever lettering you want. OK, and I'm going to center it, make it bigger so we can see what we're looking at. So from here, if you go into the properties to get to properties, remember you can double click on it. You can click, right click, all of that. So I double, I right clicked, went to properties. Down here is where it's line type. So I can change that to perspective or envelope. Um, they're kind of related. So I personally, I always try both and see which I like better. When you turn that on, what you'll notice is you have a line above and below the text. Okay, so from here, you can adjust your shape by adding right clicks for curve points, left clicks for straight points, and you can make that outline be whatever shape it is you want. Remember the same tools work like what I just did there. Um, notice when you move the curve, it's not a perfect circle, but if I want that to be a perfect arch, if I hold the control key while I move it, I get a nice perfect arch, right? you add points you don't want that's okay just select it and delete it again if I want it let's say I want to make this like a double arch an arch here and an arch on the bottom well if I click on this hold the control key move it up now it makes it a perfect arch and I can just drag it around until I'm happy with it okay so that's your envelope I always like doing both of them envelope and perspective to see if I like one versus the other um, perspective will kind of skew it into a 3d look so I don't know, you know, the Star Wars type, I guess I probably shouldn't say that, but sorry. Um, you know, the where it looks like it's reading into the page. Oh, I just made a big mess. There we go. So you can get that type of effect by making it a perspective. See that? So it just gives it a more 3D look. All right. Versus if I take that same shape and say envelope, it's just going to stretch it to fill the shape. 
all right so you can manipulate those lines however you want to form whatever shape it is you want to fill and move it around add your left clicks your right clicks all of that and use either envelope or perspective and it will fill your text to that shape okay oh let's see what else do we have good morning everybody all right um, I was playing around with vector graphics and it's easy to figure out can you show us some drawing vector graphics then converting to embroidery so I'll most of the time when you're working with vectors you would draw them in a vector program illustrator you know corel draw whatever it is you're there's lots of different options good morning anita so to if you want to draw it within design shop notice if i hold this button down right here that's your complex fill all the way over you have select vector fill input method so from here it works just like anything else would where um, for a complex left clicks are your straight points those triangles right clicks are your curves so the dots um, but you can draw whatever it is you want so let's say that's one shape and then maybe I want a different color draw something else you know oop, I didn't select the cup yeah I'm clicking too fast I'm sorry so select that one change its color all right so when you do conversions, keep in mind there's a bunch of different ways to do an auto convert. Um, one of the, if you want to convert it all at once or one element at a time, the only difference between a vector fill and a complex fill is going to be a stitch direction line, right? And a start and a stop. So you can take any of these vectors, just click on, select it first. So it's selected, click on the insert stitch direction line, left click and drag. And now that is, a fill. I can do the same thing with this one. Add a stitch direction line, left click and drag, there's my fill. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. You can of course, you know, draw whatever complex graphic you like. And then let's see, there's got to be some in here we can play with. Graphics. Oh, let's find one. Looking for one that I like. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter in the end. That's a vector. I guess we can use that one. Oh, that's weird. I guess use that one. If it's any. Okay, so this is a vector. You can see it's got all the diff different vector shapes in it. If you want to do it all at once, you can of course click on it and right here do the convert and it will do it for you. And you can see there you know, it took the vector and went straight into a sewable file. Okay, so you can do it that way. You can also do, there was um, a video done on the auto convert feature right here, the stitch graphic, sorry, the graphic conversion assistant. So there's a full video out there that explains it, which allows you to kind of walk through it and help the auto convert along to get a nicer sew out or more finished. But um, you can use it either way. You can also individually select them. So if I get out of this thing, cancel. Okay, so let's say I get out of that. I can again select the vector and add stitch directions or, you know, tell it to convert just that one. Operations, um, convert stitches. So now I just have a circle. So you can do it individually by adding stitch directions. You can tell it to convert all at once. You can use the stitch graphic. Um, region, which I didn't even show you, that's this one, stitch graphic region. If you click on a region, it will select that entire thing. That's kind of better used on, um, what is that, on bitmaps and JPEGs because it's going to go find all the areas for you. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways you can address this. Um, what software can you use for digitizing or for what? Sylvia, you asked that question. Um, for digitizing, I use Design Shop Professional. Uh, I like it. That's what we're demoing here for you. Um, if you're talking about vectors, you know, you can do them directly within Design Shop by just using this vector fill and drawing whatever you want. Um, you can also do it in Illustrator, Corel. Uh, there's some other ones that are online based. I don't remember the names of them. Um, when I see them, I go, oh, yeah, that's it. 
but you know there's a bunch of different options for creating vectors but for digitizing I'd use design shop personally but um, let me know if that's not what you're asking there uh, let's see what other questions uh, in the design checker, is there a chart or something that tells you what the codes mean? So I don't know what you mean by codes because when you use the design checker, so if I come over here, so this isn't a code, this is actually the element. So if this is what you're wondering what that code number 22 means, that's not actually a code, that's the element within your file. So if you come over to project view and I look down here, okay, element 22 is this guy. Okay, so that is the one that this comment is. The issue is what it's actually telling you what's wrong with it. More than two layers of thread. So it just means I've got a large stack up of things there um, that you would need to kind of address to avoid having heavy penetrations, needle penetrations in that area. Okay. Uh, on YouTube, is there a way that I can actually decide where I want an exit point to be? I'd like it to be on the edge of a complex, but it puts it on the center rather than the edge. Absolutely. Okay, so with these complex fills, you see this start and... Uh, actually, let me turn off some of this stuff so we can look at it a little bit without all the distractions. All right, so I've got this circle. Notice down here there's a green circle and a red X. The green circle is where you tell it to be the start point. The red X is where it ends. So let's say I want it to start over here. You know, you can see the kind of um, splice because what's happening is it starts here. You know, it's going to walk down, sew up, walk up, sew back down so that it can end here. So it's going to do that kind of games. Well, if I want, I can just click on that circle, move it over here. So now the start point is going to be however close it can get to that. And with the end point, I can again click on the X, move it over here, and notice that splice went away because it's going to sew all in one direction now. So you can move those wherever you want them to be. All right, with complexes, um, if you put them, you know, it's, you can say right there and it will end with the last stitch right there versus on the edge, it's going to end whatever the closest it can get to that if it's outside the wireframe. So yeah, you can absolutely move both your start and stop around. Let's say you're having a hard time selecting those points. So you can see when I drag them around, when my mouse hovers over it, you can see that kind of off to the bottom right of the arrow, you see the circle in the X that shows you it's highlighting over that versus when I highlight over the dot, you can see the circle that appears to the bottom right of the arrow. That's telling me if I click now, it's gonna select the point versus the um, one of these. If for some reason you're unable to select it, that's okay. Select your shape, come over here to your start and stop. It's the same circle and X. Click on that. Now, the first click you, you put on the screen is gonna be the start point. The second point is going to be the exit. So if I click here and then I click here, notice there's my start point, there's my end point, okay? So you can drag them around, move them wherever you want, or, and it will recalculate where the stitches go, where, how it ends. Or you can just say, all right, forget that. I'm just going to tell it. I want it to start here, end here. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Okay. So with the design checker, just to be clear again, the if you go to the page 37, it shows you all the things it, it's looking for, but there aren't really codes. There's just the issues, and it tells you directly what it wants right here with the issue. These elements, that's just telling you what number it is in your list on your project view so that you can go find that thing to go use to go fix it okay all right so that's all of these um there was a question when sewing a monogram letter with an extra wide satin stitch how do i get a split like this versus um where there's a line running through the middle versus just a solid fill that goes back and forth okay so let's go create it one, it's going to be buried down, just to give you the highlight of the answer, is it's going to be buried down in the properties over here. Okay, so you can either use an auto split, but that won't give you a single line. That'll do whatever it wants. I happen, personally, I think, I think my friends over at Mocha laugh at me a little bit of how much I love that auto split, but I love it. Um, but rather than that, you can always play with your partitions. Okay, the, in the manual, if you go to page 109 in the manual of Design Shop, it talks in depth about part partitions, but I will tell you 
I personally just play with them until I like what I see. Okay, so if you want to get the what each one actually means, um, go look at that man the page in the manual and it'll kind of explain it. All right, so let's see. New S. Let's go make it a monogram. So under monogram, I don't remember which one I used. Maybe that one? Nope. Oh, and that's pretty. All right. So if I just use this, make it a different color so we could actually see it. Center it. Let me turn all this off and zoom in. And zoom extents. If I put it in 3D, this is what you'll see. Notice how it's got like this fill through here and then satin through here, fill. Number one, it's good to understand why that's happening, right? So if I go into the properties by double clicking on the element, notice under top stitching that's what's governing what the what these stitches look like okay so right here you'll see use fill for stitch lines greater than and then there's a number what that's telling us is whenever any individual from one needle penetration to the next all right so from one side of my wireframe to the next once it gets bigger than this number it's going to quit using satin stitches and use it's going to start using fills all right and that's intentional, that's a protection for you because imagine if you had, um, let's say you had a one inch piece of thread going from one side to another, that's pretty big. If I go take a pen and you know, I have that as a monogram here with one inch pieces of thread, it's not gonna hold up well, right? You're gonna snag it, it's not gonna launder well, things like that. So you wanna make sure your points don't get over, you know, some usually 60 to 70 points long, six to seven millimeters and that's about the longest you want to make sure it holds up nicely all right so here it's automatically converting for you so how can say you don't like that look you want that single line through there look well what what can we do about it well one play with it i like playing with these and just see look at what it does change to auto split like i said i i really like that look um i know some people don't i like it i think it's pretty um kind of obsessed with it at the moment but you, you know you can try auto split so that's one um, the other thing you can play with is over here all these partitions notice if I change the numbers uh, different things are gonna happen to this look see that by messing with this I can also go to let's say I make it zero with five partition let's do four three two let's do two partitions and let's make it zero zero just for grins so you can see it that puts a hard line down the middle okay um except for the fact that this is still yeah anyway so you can see it's putting that leaving your satin stitch here fill there you can play with the different stitch types um, change it to standard and address your own partition and it will do different things along there based on what your numbers are. Okay, now, like I said, I tend to just play with the numbers down here until I like what I see. There are, there's a, each of these numbers actually mean something. And if you go look at the manual, um, it actually shows you exactly what those mean. Um, I know Nate's told me several times and I keep on going back to, I just play with the numbers until I like it. So, um, without much thinking to it, but that's how I would do it. So if you go back, I said, you can just change your partitions, you know, two partitions, zero, zero, will give you a hard cut down there. I left it at satin, set the, um, fill for greater than to 70. So that gives me the satin through here rather than that hard line going through it. If it were fill with the partitions, it would do a hard line through here. So it, you know, whatever look you're going for. Okay, so I don't see any other comments typed in, so I'll keep going. Um, 3D foam cap settings, troubleshooting, Richardson's. Richardson's, um, I don't have a machine in this room to be able to show you different things um, with setup. I know there's, I'm trying to think if there's a video online. I believe that we've done a few videos on caps so that we can get you the links to to kind of go through them. But I mean, one of the things you can try 
with puff you know use the auto puff you can also set it to standard and set your puff setting to you know try 30 um, usually somewhere between 22 and 30 maybe 40 let's say somewhere in there if you set it to standard works nicely um, takes a little bit of playing with if you're going to use standard to get the hang of what setting you want uh, but it you know, I've seen people suggest foaming, uh, sorry, steaming that center seam to kind of soften it up a little bit. Um, making sure you hoop really well is very important and get it as close to the cap frame, the cap gauge as you can. Um, but I mean, it's, I would go look at those videos. So maybe we can get the links to the cap videos for you. Uh, it would be my suggestion there. And if those don't help, let us know. Maybe we can see about making a Wednesday type video for it, specific to hats. Um, there was another question about ball, you know, act feed settings. Is there different suggestions in the manual? So keep in mind this chart is different for different software versions. Okay, so I have this for the latest software, the MT16X. Um, but if you're using you know an xt and xts something this table is going to be different so go pull up the manual for your machine and for what oh not your machine what os you're using that's really what's important whether you're using v10 v9 v11 you know what machine but anyway you know here's a good start point for you i'll say personally i tend to start at four and go up from there um if i notice and look at the conditions of how it's sewing right so if it's snapping okay that means my thread's too tight that means the act feed number needs to go up so my minimum preset would go up um if i see looping or things are just not nice and clean they're it's they're too loose that means my act feed number's too high i decrease it some so that's kind of how i work i usually start with four for standard things on towels um I usually start at 10, but they say 18, but I probably end up at 18, honestly. So <laughs> I usually start around 10 on those. Um, but yeah, here's a good starting point for you to look at. And, you know, when you find things that work for different materials, write it down. Um, you know, what worked, what didn't work. Keep that kind of database going for you. So you've got something to go off of for the future and it's not always playing with things. Okay. Um, all right. Have you covered pulling in an outside design and beefing it up for better results? So there's several videos that were done on how to work with expanded files. So we'll see about getting those links for you. But I mean, it beefing it up for better results. That's a loaded statement to some degree, because what are you trying to beef up? Are you trying to make things like if it's text, if you want it bolder? Well, you would add pull, comp pull offset, right? And you do that under the scale tab. If you don't like the underlay, there's not enough underlay, well, you can add like a primer stitch underneath it to kind of stabilize the fabric. So it, you know, understanding what things you want to modify would be helpful of what you're specifically looking to beef up um, for better results. You know, usually I would say pull offset is probably the most common that, you know, things are not as bold as they should be well in that case you would come over to the scale tab and down here where it says pull compensation you can add some offset on here and same with the columns you can add offset here so this is not an expanded file but this same thing when you right click on expanded you can go to scale and you'll see here's how you would add pull offset to the fill areas to your columns which are your satin stitches um, that's where you would adjust them Okay, so to get that, you would find whatever element you want to modify, right click, go to scale, and then adjust these numbers here. Okay, um, those show up when you, you're working with. Ah, there's the, they did put the link for working with expanded to wireframe. Okay, how to convert it and also work with those. All right, so if those aren't the sort of things you're looking to beef up, let us know. Um, can answer those specifically as well. The other question had to do with the marrow stitch. So the marrow stitch is so fun. Let's see, custom designs, faux marrow. All right, so if I drag that on here, question was, you know, can I, adju can I adjust the shape? Can I modify the shape? Yeah, you can. 
So notice I just selected the one point on the final stitch, so I'd have to modify more than just this. But to create your own custom shapes, you can absolutely add points, um, move points around to make them whatever shape it, you want. Now notice this is a decorative foam arrow one. Okay, so if you've got the ability to create, dec you know, to use decoratives, you can of course draw your own shapes. So I can come over here, tell it to be a decorative, go down to faux marrow one, and I can draw whatever shape I want. Okay, and it will create that stitch for you. All right, so you can draw your own. You can modify the shapes that are there. Um, there, foam arrow two, made it go the other way. <laughs> so that way the chain stitch is on the inside. So you can of course, you know, modify the ones that are already there to match your customer shapes. You can draw your own. Once it's on drawn, then you just gotta create the rest of the stitches. You need to create your patch. Okay. So I kind of did it fast, so let's do it again. To get to the foam arrow shapes, Select the automatic input tool, go to custom designs, go to foam arrow, left click and drag whatever shape it is you want to modify. I'm going to close this and let's say select that point. Let's move it up. So then all I got to do is the same for these others. Select that point, move it up. Same with this guy, select that point, move it up. Voila. I have a new, new patch shape I can use. Okay. Now you can always create your own. So you can modify the shapes that are there. Create your own. Just use the decorative. It's so versatile and so fun. Okay. Let's see what other ones we have. All right. Well, those were all the questions I had typed in. And I think I got them all. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if there's any others that were typed in on Facebook or YouTube. I see we have a bunch of links for you all. That's cool. All right, you're welcome, Tommy. I don't see any other questions typed in, so I'm very blurry. That might be your internet connection because um, I think it's working out well. So you can always find these on both YouTube and um, and Facebook after the fact to rewatch them and you know that way it can buffer and do all its things to give you a nice clear image based on your particular internet speed. All right. Any other questions for you? I don't see any. Okay. Well, if that's it for today, um we will be back next Friday to answer any questions you might have. So me, you can email them to applications at melco.com. You can type them in on these feeds and we'll get them, you know, answered real time for you. That way we can answer any follow-up questions and, you know, want you guys to be successful with all this. It's a lot of fun doing digitizing and sewing. Um, you know, let us know what you guys want to learn and we'll try to get that incorporated for you. All right. Oh, you're welcome, Margaret. Well, you guys have a wonderful week, and I will be back next Friday. Apologize again for missing last week, but we are back, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye, guys.